Hello, everybody. Good morning, everybody. So there is one thing that I want you to do. Please stand up where you are for a second. Really quick, stand up where you are just for a second. Stand up where you are just for a second. I want you to inhale. Exhale. Let's do that one more time. Exhale. So that's God, the Holy Spirit, in filling you with life and also allowing you to rest in His presence. Let's do it one more time. Inhale. Exhale. Since we're standing up, I want to invite those of you that are able to come a little bit more to the front. We don't want to feel so separated from you, all right? There is no, nothing that is going to bother you in the front. There are no animals, all right? Nothing is going to bite you in the front. So if you can come a little closer to the front, we would really appreciate it just so that we don't feel so separated from all of you. Let's inhale one more time as we're moving. Exhale. Very good. The, next, the first song that we're going to sing is like a prayer. So close your eyes where you are and allow the lyrics of the song to, to be like a prayer to God at this moment. Let's go to our next song, Open the Eyes. 
as we continue in the spirit of worship and prayer, I pray that from your heart you would say to God, God, open my eyes because I want to see you. Let's sing together. sing to see you high
So our friend uh, Shania, she's in the front. She's going to be leading us in a wonderful song called I'm So Blessed. How many of you believe that you are blessed by God? Amen. If you're here today, if you're smiling, if you're breathing, if you are alive, if you're with your family and friends, if you feel at peace, these are all blessings from God. And these are things that call us to worship Him and to say thank you, God. I'm so blessed. So let's sing this song together. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, Trouble like at my door today, I ain't gonna let it in. And the world you wanna steal my joy away, but I ain't gonna let it Everybody win. Sing. Cause I'm my best day, I'm a child of God, I'm my worst day, I'm a child of God, oh. church um, today we want to give thanks to God we want to magnify the Lord and tell him how good he is every single day of our lives right today I'm sick I am not in the best shape to sing but it doesn't matter when we're praising the Lord right amen right God is good right all the time God is good so when we sing this song we sing it together and we we praise God for all the blessings he's bestowed on us okay I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from everything. You're welcome to sing along. Those who look on him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me from.
the one our hearts hunger for. Amen. Now is the time where we can gather together and bow down and kneel before our Lord in prayer. If you want to remain in your seats, uh, please feel free to do so. But I invite those to come forward who wish to. O oh, gracious Lord, our Redeemer. Lord, we glorify your name and give you praise. Lord, you are the creator. You are the Alpha, the Omega. From the beginning to the end, you are Lord God. You are our Savior, our Redeemer. Lord, we have to shout praise to your name Lord, I just invite those here in this building to just, for this moment, just to shout praises to your name, Lord. 
Shout the name of Lord. You are merciful. You are gracious. You are so good to us, better than we deserve. Lord, at this time of the year, we just mourn and celebrate you. We mourn the fact, Lord, that you had to hang on that cross and bear our burden, our sorrows, the pain you felt. But, Lord, we celebrate that because of that unselfish act, Lord, because of that great, great love that you have for us, we are able to live through you, Lord God. We are able, Lord, to rise again one day and see you and spend eternity with you, Lord God. We are so thankful. We thank you, Lord, for knowing what we need, for giving us what we need, not what we want. You are so wise, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you just fill each person here, each person online. Fill us with the gift of your spirit. Give us the wisdom, the discernment that we need, Lord, in these last days. Guide us, Lord, to where you want us to go, what you want us to do. Keep us humble, O Lord, to do what you want us to do, to step out in faith for you. Lord God, you are our Savior. Without you, Lord God, we have nothing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you doesn't even seem like it's enough, but thank you. Thank you for being our Lord and Savior. And today, Lord, as as a play is being presented to us, Lord, I just want to lift up those who are taking part. They have spent a lot of time and effort to portray this play, Lord, and I ask that you just be with them. Help them, Lord, to speak clearly and so that the message that they give us is felt amongst each person that watches. I pray, Lord, that each person that's in this building leaves today knowing you a little bit more, wanting a deeper relationship with you, wanting to search and have a hunger for you, Lord God, a hunger that cannot be quenched. Keep us, Lord, from the distractions of this world that seek to take us away from you, that seek to confuse us, Surround us with your angels to protect us always, O oh Lord. Because we can't fight these battles on our own. We need you, Lord God, to fight the battles that come across our path. So, Lord, we know you have already gained the victory. Help us to claim that victory. You are so good to us. Lord, I thank you for this day that we have that your children can gather all over the world and rest in you. May this day be a blessing not just to us, but to you. And may everything we do, everything we do, Lord, bring glory to your name. I pray these things in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we sing this last song, uh, once again, I want to invite you to stand as we speak the name of Jesus together.
On the first day of the Passover ceremonies, when bread made with yeast was purged from every Jewish home, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where shall we plan to eat the Passover? And Jesus replied, go into the city and find. And where? Where in all Jerusalem are we going to find one man, one man carrying water? It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Think, Peter. Think, think. A man carrying water. Yeah, a man yes. carrying water. So yes. Un- oh. There it is. There it a is. A man carrying water. That's woman's work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> woman's work or perhaps a slave. Ah, very good, John. Thank you. Maybe the master got you to be a, from a fisherman to a fisher of men. Now we can just work on that anger, son of the storm. Well, 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 maybe just like you, my dear Simon, I too am a work in progress. By the master potter himself. Ah, uh, the master. I fear for him, Peter. I know. Something's happening. He wants to come to Jerusalem. He wants to be here for Passover. Nothing is stopping him. It's like a moth to a flame. I I just hope that wherever this room leads us, that God's going to protect us. I've seen the temple guard. They've been watching our every move for weeks now. I get that. You know what? If it wasn't for his popularity, I bet you would have been arrested by now. (laughs) Why do they hate the master as much as they do? Is it because he stands for all that is good? A lot of good people out there, John. You know it as well as I do. You know what it is, though, that gets the chief priest angry. It's his claim to be God. Peter, you know full well that the master is God. The son of God. I know. I know. We got Rome. We got the chief priests. We have the Passover coming. Everybody's watching us. All I'm saying is just, just be a little silence about it. Don't go outspoken. Peter, Simon, Peter, you the rock. How could you think such a... Wait, wait, wait. Is that a man carrying water? Yeah, yeah, I think that's him. Well, call out to him. No, no, the master clearly said to follow him to the house he enters. Come on. Oh, oh, wait for me. You're so slow. Oh, come. Give Hurry, me a... we're going to lose him. You're so old. I... Come on. Couldn't wait. Yeah. You, sir, the master, the master is asking where he shall eat the Passover with his disciples. That, that will be me whom you're seeking for. No, I'm looking for the man carrying water. No, yeah. I, I think it will be I. And who are you? Uh, I might indeed be anyone, but in fact, I am Joseph, Bar Joseph, and this is my good servant, Timothy, and you would be the teacher's disciples. Disciples? What disciples? Teacher? I don't, uh, I don't think so. Yes, you would be Cephas. The teacher spoke about you, <laughs> and you, sir, uh, James, is it? No, sir. I'm his brother, John. John, you know him? He could be a... I I am a believer, same as you, Peter. And in fact, I spoke with the teacher agreeing to provide a safe upper room for you all to gather and have the Passover feast. And you, Timothy, you will indeed see to that, won't you? What an incredible pleasure to have the teacher here with us today. A slave then? Hmm. Oh, a believer. I and my whole family. Yes, come along. We have a lot of work to do preparing the upper room for the feast. Follow me. We have stocked both food and drink that we may all uh, drink and partake of it. Um, I will take the jar of water up there so that they can wash their feet after a long day. Fine, fine, let's go then. Hey, maybe I can get my favorite spot right next to the master. That's not funny. Why must I always be reminded? Mm. Temper, temper, John. Come on, come on. Let's go. The others are coming. We've got a lot of preparation to do. Fine. I'm going first. I get my spot. Thank you. I know I'm not sitting beside him. Wait. Wait. Yeah. 
Oh, love a neighbor with dear Simon. Oh, Matthew Levi, spoken like a true tax collector. <laughs> truly, dear Simon, truly. I wonder if you ever forget what I was and what the master had made me in. You know my feelings toward tax collectors, Matthew, pawns of the Roman bosses. As a member of the Zealots, I spent too many days fighting for what I believe in. We rose up in rebellion against that Roman taxation. We were intensely conservative nationalists and proud of all things Jewish. Yes, dear Simon, as you know, I used to be a tax collector. When Jesus found me, I was a man in this dispute, working for the Romans only because of the size of the money I could extract from my fellow Jews. So hated by my own people for overcharging and dealing with the enemy. I was no less disgusted by the Romans who see me as an evil, a sheep in wolf clothing. Nevertheless, I despise myself. You're being too hard on yourself, Matthew. Me? You're a good man. No, 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 no. As you know, the master is creating something in me just as he has created something beautiful in your life. Yes, it's true. I was a patriot and a nationalist, focused on removing the oppression of Rome from the, my people. But now, after meeting Christ Jesus, my focus has moved from national liberation to liberating people from sin. Here we are, Matthew, a tax collector and a tax hater, yes, joining Matthew. forces under Christ. But it should be noted that God's grace does permit individuality, yes. while at the same time promoting spiritual oneness. As he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes, my friend. Come there, Simon. Let's go eat the Passover together. Let's go. Ah, here it is then, the place where the Passover will be kept. Doesn't look like much. I hope they didn't spend too much money on it this time, and I hope they got some good servants. After all, I'm the one who has to pay for it. What a waste. I can't believe it. We were so set for the removal of those terrible, rascal, Roman-type people that I can't stand. Three and a half years I've been working to remove them out of our lives. And I knew that the master was the one to fulfill this. He had done miracles. He had performed amazing feats. People were following him. And finally, after the 5,000 who had been fed, I thought we had an army. He produced food out of thin air. We could feed everyone and not have a problem. <sighs> But then he had to say those most terrible, terrible words. Why did he say those words? You must eat my flesh and drink my blood if you were to be a part of me. Who says things like that? This is the craziest thing I ever heard. I looked around and sure enough, everyone started leaving one by one. They started to leave, and I too felt like I should leave, but then I felt loyalty to the master, and sure enough, Jesus said and turned to each of us, would you too leave me? And that good old self-righteous Peter, was well, he always comes to defense, and he said, Lord, where should we go? You have the words of truth. And then Jesus said something strange again. He said, I chose each of you individually, but one of you is a devil. I'd heard him talk like that before. Peter himself had kind of told the master that that one time when Jesus had said that I was going to go and die, and Peter had said, you're not going to go and die. And then Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan. And I found that strange at the time. And here again, he was calling one of us a devil. <sighs> and then there was that terrible time when I thought it was a good meeting, and we were at Simon's house, and that woman Mary came in, and we all know her, her reputation. I couldn't believe that the, the master was allowing this, and he came, she came in with that 
most expensive ointment, that alabaster glass, and broke it on his feet and started wiping his feet with her hair. And I thought to myself, how could this money have been spent on something so much better, like myself maybe, but, you know, the poor. But Jack John, you know, made me out to be some sort of crook, saying that, you know, that wasn't what it was intended for. And even Jesus said strange words like, this is for my burial. I, why was he always talking about his death? It's such a, it was such a disappointment. <sighs> but, I, but I had a plan. I had a plan. My final act to get Jesus to do what I knew he needed to do as Messiah, which was remove those Romans from our lives. I had been working secretly with the priests, and I promised them that the time would come when we would, when I would hand them over to Jesus. But I didn't really want that. I just wanted Jesus to be pushed in the right direction. So that's my plan. My final plan is to have Jesus pushed just enough that he will do what he has been promised to do, which is remove these Romans from our lives. Yeah, that's, that's going to be, that's going to be my final act. I hear, wait, yep, someone's coming. I'm going to take this money and put it under this rock here so no one will get it. This looks safe. Yes, Jesus will do what I need him to do if it's the last thing I do. We are here. James, big James, come. You too, Alita James. Come, come. We are here now. Very well, Bartholomew. Bartholomew. That name sounds strange to my ears. Since John changed my name to Nathaniel, I'm not accustomed to hear that name. I think that I should ask John to rename me as well. When people think of James, they think of you, big James. And I have to say, look down. Look way down until they find me. It's so strange, isn't it? In God's eye, in the master's eyes, we are all at the same worth and stature. But you, B. James, and Peter, and John, they had the privilege to witness things with the master, like the resurrection of Lazarus and uh, the transfiguration. But as you, Alita James, and I, we've been mildly working for Christ, and we are so joyful to serve him. Yes, we are all equal in his eyes. How did you first come to meet the teacher, Nathaniel? Well, it was Philip who told me about the master, but it was the master himself who actually found me when I was meditating on the fig tree. Even the disciples, not of the 12, have their place under the Messiah's care. Even the woman, my mother, Mary, and James, your mother, Salome, serving as disciples. Truth is, it was my mother who led me to the Messiah at the beginning. And now we get to eat Passover together with him. Yes, James, you're closer with the master. He's always talking about his dad. But he's the son of God. Nothing could happen to him. Yes, James, I have also been having bad thoughts. Is it wise that we are here in Jerusalem, the way the elders are speaking against him? I'm afraid, James. It's okay. The others will be here soon, so... Perhaps you two should try and convince him to leave Jerusalem. Leaving the, trying to convince the master to leave Jerusalem, that will not happen. But still. You have to enter through the back door. Come along then. Oh, let's go. Didn't I tell you this is where we would find the house? <laughs> Behold Philip, the mathematician, the man of numbers. Hey, are you a map maker too? Soon you're going to be challenging your, the role of Judas Iscariot for treasure. <laughs> not funny, Andrew. No, you know how I dislike God. the foreigner. Oh, you know Judas may not look like us or have the same accent, but in the f the, he shares the fundamental characteristic, that of being chosen by the master. True. Still, I do not wish to talk of this man. It would be my bad fortune to be sitting alongside him at the table tonight. Don't worry, Philip. I'll sit beside the money man. Ah, that might be well, Andrew. You on one side, Peter on the other, perhaps. Uh, who knows? 
The master will call us to eat, and then he will arrange places. Speaking of the master calling, Andrew, how were you first called? Oh, Jesus came to me and he said, what do you seek? And I was surprised. Not who do you seek, but what do you seek? What are you looking for? It's as though he was asking, what is the central purpose of my life? You know, I, re I responded, where do you live, Lord? And he said, come and see. <clears throat> Not just come and talk, but come and find the things that only Christ could offer. How about you, Philip? What's your story? I think the moment I first remember was the feeding of the 5,000. It, it was my choice to, to be in charge of feeding the disciples. It was on this day that I realized that to feed a crowd of this size would cost a total far greater than the ones we had in the bag laid in Judas's grubby little hands. <laughs> but I was good at pluses and minuses, but I failed to realize the, the epic resources of the master and how he, what he could do with a few small loaves and fish. How he would multiply these resources. It was another example of where my numbers showed a deficit. And God's math showed a surplus. That's right. I remember the story of the boy with the lunchbox. You know, I was the one. I was the middleman, if you remember that story. Mm -hmm. I was the one that brought the boy with the loaves and fishes to Jesus. And you may remember another time where I brought a group of Greek travelers to Jesus that they might see him. You know, you played an important role in both those stories, if I recall. True. Yeah, uh, uh, the Greeks... Uh, they came to see Jesus, but sought me out due to my Greek understanding and my closeness with the master. Spiritually, I'm sorry, they, they've always sought through perfection, through false images. Believe the rights of the many above the rights of the few. Spiritually, they hope for good things, true and beautiful. But... Did not, did not want to seek these um, qualities through the Christ, but needed proof firsthand. So it was I, Philip, that was granted this grand gesture, introducing the Christ to the Greek people, unveiling his wondrous light to their society, both in a common quest of finding the true meaning of life, Strange. And they call me the evangelist among the twelve. <laughs> Speaking of the twelve, shall we not join our brothers? Yes. Hurry, Thomas. It's your fault we're late. I'm sure they're here already. Well, my fault? Yes, perhaps. But I had to make sure that this bridge was sufficiently strong enough for a crossing. How could you doubt it's carrying our weight? It's been carrying loads of commerce for generations. My nature gives into doubt. Just as you have three names, so I have a questioning nature. You're a, cor you're a courageous man, Thomas. A courageous realist. I recall when we were all debating the wisdom of coming to Jerusalem with the master, and you simply said, let us also go die with him. I'm a realist because I look at all aspects of the situation. Courageous because I deal with the situation regardless of the consequences. But I am who I am because of who I am in Christ Jesus. Friend Thomas, ask her of question. I can't say I always agree with the master's reasoning. But what I can say, if he was to go... I would be with him. It doesn't matter what question I ask, but it would be unthinkable for me to be unfaithful. With the teacher, we shared a wonderful time of discussion of learning with the Savior. What I didn't understand, he explained. But there's much I couldn't comprehend. You see, the teacher talked about going to heaven. I'm confused. 
When? Where? How? You see, my mind is not like others who are satisfied with mere generalities. I need to know the whole story. I need to know why I believe, what I believe. I too shall learn from your questioning, Thomas. Let us go now. Father, the time has come. Reveal the glory of your Son so I can reflect the glory back to you. You have given me authority over every man and every woman in all the earth. And now, I give eternal life to all those you have given me. Father, I brought you glory here on earth by doing everything you asked me to. And now, as I stand in your presence, reveal my glory, the glory we shared before the world began. I have told these men all about you. They were in the world and you gave them to me. Actually, they were always yours, but you gave them back to me, and I, I give them your commands, and now they know that everything I have is a gift from you, and they truly believe you sent me. My plea is not for the world, but for these you have given me. I'm coming to you, Father. I'm leaving them behind. Keep them on your own care. So none of them is missing. During my time here with them, I kept well within your family all of those you have given me. So none of them will perish. I guarded them. So none of them will perish, but one, the son of hell, as the scripture foretold. Father, I'm leaving them behind. With my, during my time here with them, I told them many things so they would be filled with my joy. I gave them your commands and they accepted them. But now the world hates them for it because they don't fit in it anymore, just as I don't. But I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from Satan's power. They're not part of the world any more than I am. Just as you send me to this world, I am now sending them. So my prayer, is not just for them, but also for all those future believers that will come to me through the testimony of them. My prayer for them is that they will be of one heart, one mind, just as we are. I gave them the glorious unity of being one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in them, everything being perfected into one. So the world will know you sent me. I will understand that you love them just as much as you love me. Father, the world 
doesn't know you. But I do, Father. And these disciples, they know you sent me. I have revealed you to them. And I will keep on revealing you. Keep them safe, Father. Keep them strong. Keep them pure through the teachings of your word of truth. And keep them pure and true to the service of my name. While together they build my church. And keep me strong, Father. For the task at hand is one that I would avoid if that could be. But not my will be done, Father, but yours. I go now, so I may say goodbye of those I love. Now, with the festival of the Passover fast approaching, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Mm -hmm. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end, each one special in his eyes. Let us pray. Blessed art thou, eternal Lord, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Amen. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around his waist. Come, Peter, so I may wash your feet first. You are going to wash my feet? Yes, Peter. What I do now, you may not understand, but you will understand later. You're never going to wash my feet. Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. Oh. <laughs> oh, not just my feet, Master. My head and my hands, too. Peter, you're bathed. If you're bathed, you're clean. You don't need to wash but your feet. And you're all clean, except for one. Come, Nathaniel. There was Nathaniel, a guileless man in whom there is no pretense, nor subterfuge, no insincerity, a man transparently honest, his mind like an open book, which everyone can read, his thoughts straight and not crooked. James. (laughs) 
Ah, James, the son of Alphaeus. If your work is wrought in an obscure place, and if your labor is unnoticed and unrewarded, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Andrew. Yes, Andrew, the evangelist, the one who brought the little boy and also Peter to Jesus. Judas. Ah, uh, Judas Iscariot, into whose heart the devil had already entered, that he would betray the Lord Jesus Christ. Thomas. Thomas, the doubter, the man given to questioning, but also blessed with loyalty to the end. James and John. Come on, big brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and his loyal brother John, who both shared many quiet and distinct moments alone with the Savior. Philip, follow me. Ah, Philip, to whom Christ said, follow me, the only one directly and personally called to discipleship. Matthew. Then there's Matthew, who was formerly known as Levi, the tax collector, but he left his toll booth behind to travel lonely roads with he who gave without ever taking. Thaddeus.
Thaddeus, or Judas, but not Iscariot, the unknown disciple who served a known savior. And Simon? And finally, Simon, the zealot, a hot-headed mercenary whose soul caught fire with the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Men, do you understand what I've done to you? No. No, Lord. No, Lord. Okay, you call me Lord, you call me teacher. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're right. I am the Lord. I am the teacher. So if I, the Lord, the teacher, have washed your feet, you should go and do the same to one another. I'll tell you this truth. No slave is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the one who sent him. So if you love me, you will follow my commands, and you will be happy following my example. We love you, Lord. We love you. Yeah, yeah. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowd pressed in to see. stripes upon his back and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head and he bore Jerusalem, 
Los soldados le abrían paso a Jesús, mas la gente se acercaba para ver a qué daba que a cruz. Por la vía dolorosa, que es la vía del dolor, como ve a vino Cristo. Master, why is this night so different than all the other nights? Well, John, any other night, you can eat either leavened or unleavened bread. Any other night, you can eat any kind of herbs. But tonight, only unleavened herb, bread, and bitter herbs. This bread, what does it mean? It is eaten because the dough of our ancestors didn't have time to become leavened. They baked unleavened cakes because they were brought out of Egypt and they didn't have time to become leavened. Nor they have prepared any provisions for themselves. And these bitter herbs, what do they mean? These are eaten for us to remember that the Egyptians embittered the lives of our ancestors. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks to the Israelites. <laughs> and they, they, they assign every kind of hard service and break a mortar and labor. Therefore, we are, we are bound, bound to, to thank, thank, praise, glorify, extol, laud, laud honor, bless, exalt, and, and reverence him who performed these miracles for our ancestors. He brought us from slavery to freedom, from sorrow to joy, from mourning to festivity, from servitude to redemption. Let us therefore sing a new song in his presence. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, 
the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Blessed thou, eternal Lord, King of the universe, who redeemed us from oppression and brought us to this night to eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs. May you bring us to enjoy many other solemn feasts and sacred seasons. That we may enjoy in the build of your kingdom. And exalt in your holy service. We give you thanks for our deliverance. For the redemption of our souls. Amen. 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 I must tell you, I know one of you will betray me tonight. What? 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 Who would do that? Who is he talking about? That betray? can't be right. Someone here? One of the twelve? Betray you? That can't be right. It must be a mistake. Huh? Master, if what you says is true, which one of us is it? Well... It is the one where I shall dip this morsel and give it to him. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. Judas. Judas! What you must do, no. go quickly, Judas. Yeah, thank you, brother. No. Uh -oh. What? No. Judas. Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? Yeah. Bro, Judas, where are you going? <laughs> what? Don't worry, I've got this. Master, will there not be lamb so for the Passover meal? Well, behold, the Lamb of God who is sacrificed to save you. This is my body, which is given that you may have life. Eat it and do this in remembrance of me. Take these two and divide it among yourselves. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes.
May the Eternal One give strength to his people and bless them with peace. This cup which is poured out in front of you is the new covenant on my blood. Drink now. Praise be to your name forever. Forever. God and King, great and holy, in heaven and in earth. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Little children, I will be with you just a little longer. And then you shall seek me, but as I, as I have told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. But I give you one new commandment, that you love one another. As much as I have loved you, that you love one another. Master, where are you going? Where I am going is not for you to know, Peter. You cannot follow me now, but you will shall follow me later. No, no, no. Where you go, I go. You will not leave my side. I will be with you from now on. I will die for you. Peter, you will lay down your life for me? I will. I don't think so, Peter. I'll tell you this. Before the next rooster crows, you will have denied knowing me three times. Oh, no. Oh. My friends, do not dwell in sorrow. Believe in God as I have taught you. Believe in me, as I have shown you. The time has come for me to leave this place, to be with my Father. And as you know me, you know the way where I am going. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How could we know the way? Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. If you had known me, you know the Father, and you know the where, where I'm going. From now on, all of you have known him. Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough. Yes. Philip, I have been with you all this time, and you still don't know me. If you have seen me, Philip, you have seen the Father. The words that I have spoken have come from the Father. So if you love me, you will follow my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will send you another helper. The Spirit of truth, that the world cannot receive him, because it cannot see him or know him. But you do, because it lives in you. Let us pray. Father, keep these people, my people, in your own care, so they could be one and be united just as we are. Amen. 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 Come now. Let's sing together a song as we make our way to the Mount of Olives in preparation for tomorrow. Come with us, love, love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet 
sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. The hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets. Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, or walk the golden streets, or walk the golden streets. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. this production of the Holy Feast. More importantly, I hope that you followed in the footsteps of the disciples and followed Jesus and got a fresh look at Him and a fresh appreciation for who He is. Before I have a final prayer, I want to share a few thank yous with you. First, I want to thank the AV team. And I want to thank them for not just even today, but every single time we meet. What a blessing our team is. They make so much happen behind the scenes, and they rarely get any kind of, uh, any kind of appreciation from the front. But guys, without you, there wouldn't be this church happening. A special mention to Mikey, who, is, who works hour after hour after hour this, for this play and each and every week. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey, as well. Thank you to Frida, who made all the costumes, and for her direction and guidance. All right, Frida. Thank you to Alex and Rena for all the props and hard work they always do in the background. We thank Laura, Laura who choreographed the wonderful Y4C group, Youth for Christ. And that wonderful deep baritone of Doug who did the narration. Thank you, Doug. And thank you, Annalise, who, did our, who was our violinist, violinist at the beginning. Appreciate you. And finally, I need to give a huge thank you to our dynamic duo. 
our director, Evelyn, and assistant director, Bentley. This couple made this whole thing happen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It was a joy to work with you. Your patience, your guidance, it was a blessing for all of us. And now, in honor of our risen Savior, let us rise and give our final and greatest thanks to Him. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus who made life possible. He doesn't just point us to a teaching, point us to a set of cognitive beliefs. He doesn't even point just to the law. He points to himself and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We are not just people who follow a bunch of teachings. We are the people who follow Jesus and live him out. It's not just one, one program or a couple of hours on Sabbath. It's, it's our life. Jesus is life. And so, Father, empower us to be your church as we leave this gathering so that we can represent you well and tell people the good news that we have a God that sacrificed himself so that we can have eternity with him. And not even just eternity to come, but even blessing now, even with the suffering and struggles of a sinful planet, Lord. Who here cannot say that they have not been blessed by you? So thank you for what you've accomplished, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your death and your resurrection and now living and interceding for us day by day. May we love one another as we follow your command. May we be united in love as we seek to follow Jesus and obey him each moment of our lives. Thank you. Empower your people now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, the Messiah. Amen and amen. Amen. Please be seated as we have a few announcements to close. I just want to remind you uh, that next Sabbath in the evening, we are having our church business meeting. So all members of Really Living, uh, you are asked and invited to please attend as we discuss the business of the church. And we need your attendance in order so that we can have a, a, a meeting even take place. So please make every effort to attend. Also on uh, the following day, Sunday the 7th, we are having another women's ministry event. It's a vegetarian cooking class. There's a cooking component. There's a spiritual component. So please register. You'll find that in your bulletin. You'll find it in the Thursday newsletter. If you are not subscribed to the Thursday newsletter, and you're wondering, what is that? Each Thursday, our office administrator, she sends out a newsletter about what's happening in our church. If you aren't getting that, you'd like to get that, please give us your, your name, your email, we'll, uh, or give it to Lauren or give it to myself. We'll send that along so that you can be included in that very important email. Uh, and also just want to remind you that Pollock is coming again in uh, April on the 20th, so please remember to bring food for your family and to share. Thank you so much. I know that you have all been blessed mightily this, this day uh, with this play. Thank you again to all who've made this possible. We appreciate your efforts, and have a blessed Sabbath.